Now, if you look at the effects list, you can see that there's several new blue categories have been added. And on top of that, if you come down to the T, you can see there's an option here for new blue titler pro. So there's several new blue things have come in. I'll talk about new blue titler pro in a second, but first of all, let's just have a look at the other stuff. You've got a couple of different filters. Things like active camera is a way of just wobbling the camera. Bleach bypass just gives you a kind of look on a clip which emulates a bleach bypass effect, which is quite popular in grading and so on. They're just a couple of typical new blue filters. The important ones are under essentials, and that's this one here, OFX Bridge. Obviously, what we were doing here was installing the OFX Bridge to get new blue titler pro. Well, if you get the OFX Bridge and you dump it on the clip, go to the information palette and open it up, you'll probably find this. There is nothing in there. Because the OFX bridge is literally just a bridge. It lets you use OFX plugins if you've got them. If you don't have any, there won't be anything in there. You've got to buy something else. So on its own, it's useless. It's useless unless you go out and buy Boris or Sapphire or something like that. The other filters you may find useful. There's only a couple of them. Obviously, they're part of New Blue's huge range of different filters, and they've only given you a couple to play with. But actually, the only reason we put all of that lot on there was literally to get to this thing, New Blue Titler Pro 5. So let's forget all that and let's have a look at New Blue Titler. Inside of Edius, you use the New Blue Titler like every other Titler. So basically, come up to the little T, click on it, and you can see now I've got New Blue Titler Pro 5. Or you can right click on a track and say New Clip Titler Pro 5, all that sort of thing. And you can set the default to be the new blue titler up in the settings. So just come up to user settings, other, and then choose new blue titler pro here as the default titler if you want to. I have to admit I don't. I've left it at quick titler myself because I still like quick titler because it's quick. New blue is nice because it's got more things in it, but quick titler is still quicker in my opinion. So all you do is you click on new blue titler and it'll open up the New Blue Titler interface for you, which is where you can configure your titles. Now I'm gonna go into using New Blue Titler in other chapters in this series. Right now you can see here, I've got a bunch of words that have popped up and I just double click on that and I can get rid of that text and put something else in. Pick it up, move it around. You've got a little widget up here to twirl it around and you can control everything about that text using this box over here where you can see you've got things like the typeface. I use impact a lot, so let's just pop that into there, pick it up, move it around, maybe let's straighten that back up again. So you can choose the typeface, the size, bold, italics, all these kind of things. Down here you can see I've got 3D face, which is where it defines the color of the text. It's called 3D face because all the titles are ready to be 3D. It doesn't look it at the moment, but if you pop down to the 3D controls here, you can see I can actually extrude it, and then suddenly I'm getting a bit of 3Dness up there. Going to ignore all that, maybe go into that in another session. But mainly, I've got the 3D face up here, which is controlling the color. So obviously I can just click on that and change the color. If I go down in the list, I've also got a shadow, because that's how it's starting, with a shadow, where I can change the color of the shadow. But if I want to add anything else, I just come up to here where it says Style Layer, click on it, and then I can add in an outline, or a glow, or whatever, or blur the face up. Let's just put an outline on there and then change that to black because I think a red outline on green text looks fairly horrible. And now there we are, I've got green text with a black outline. Actually, that green is pretty horrible, but there we are, I'll just leave it. And all these controls around here are pretty obvious. That's going to hide the face, that's going to delete it, that's going to hide the shadow, delete it, or hide the outline and delete it. Some of these things you'll see better if there's a piece of video in the background, which there isn't at the moment because I started off on a blank layer. There's other tabs up here which do other things, and I might go into those in other sections. But there we are, I've got a piece of text, it's bunged up on screen. Now what I want to do is just save that. So I'm just going to close it down with a little X, again just like I would do with QuickTitle, and say save it. And now I've got an item of text sitting on the timeline. Let's start playing it, and yep, it manages to do that on this system. I mean this is just a simple item of text, that's all. It's just one simple title on the timeline nothing fancy so it'll happily play it back when you start to animate things it probably won't play it back it does depend on how complicated it is and what your system's like if i make up another title i'm just going to pop along here say new blue titler again again double click on the text enter something then maybe what i want to do is use one of the templates that come with titler pro so if you come over here to this little thin line that we've got and click on that arrow it will open up the templates so you can see here 
At the top, there's a heading that says Project Templates. If you grab hold of that, you can see you can change it between all sorts of things, like I can have templates for different shapes, styles of text. Now, I can't see any styles of text here, but the text style is divided up into several categories. So let's go into the basics, and then you should be able to see here what the text actually looks like, a little thumbnail. Now, the version I'm using, sometimes these thumbnails don't work, but you might notice that as I'm moving my cursor, across those little boxes you can see the text on screen is actually changing so it changes to match whatever the style is I've chosen let's go into one of these cinematic styles and again you can see you've got lots of different styles and it's quite nice that you get a little preview of it but unless you double click on it so if I double click on it it'll apply it but unless I click on that it won't stick so go back to there it goes back to that 3d look that I just applied so you've got different types of effects you've got templates for what a paragraph should look like. I go to project templates, it gives you a whole title. So let's just double click on any of those and you can see it converts it into a lower third. And then you can adjust the words on there. Again, just holding the mouse over there will show you a preview of what's going on. So suppose I wanted to change it to that lower third, I could just double click on it. Now the whole template's changed. I've lost my typing. I can come into here and change this to And obviously change the typeface and things. I could select that object and change the color of the object to be something else. Let's uh, go for, oh, I don't know. Here we are, I've got a sign of greeny look, which is a bit like some of the titles I've done before. Now there's obviously a lot more to go through here, so I'll have a look at those in other tutorials. But that's the basics. You can type some text in, then you can come in here, choose some templates and then use them. Then just save it and it'll pop back into Edius. Let's just make up an animated title. So I'm going to pop into here, again go to Project Templates, and choose a title like that, which has got a bit of animation going on. You notice if I hang over it, you can see there's a little bit of twirling and movement going on. Now having chosen it, I can just come in here, and I can change the name. Now this is an animated template. You saw it animating as I was hanging my cursor over there. So you think, okay, save that and it'll be animated, right? Bosh, no it isn't. Let's just double click to go back into it and pop up to here where it says still title and change it to animated title. And now let's see what happens. Now you'll notice as soon as I clicked animated title, the interface changed a bit. So still title, you just got a basic static image animated title you suddenly get a timeline let's open up that timeline a bit and there you can see oh okay i've got all of those different elements that are part of that title and you can see they're on a timeline and they come in at different points so yeah i can see i've now got an animated title with lots of different things and these are a bit like tracks inside of edia so you know i've got the words david clark coming in here i could get them to come in earlier or i could get them to come in later just by grabbing the handles and moving them around so, quite happy with that, let's just save it, get back to Edius, and now you'll notice this happens. It's going ahead and rendering the title. So because it's animated, it's got to do more than it did for a static title, it's got to render it so I can actually use the title. And yay, that did work. That rendering time will vary depending on how complicated your title is. It's what they call a cache, so it's caching it in the background. You can turn it off, but if you turn it off, then it won't play back properly. So if I come to the word title here and go to cache settings, you can see you've got this option here to render the cache when you close it down. And if I turn that off and then save it, saves quicker, but then if I try and play it back, you'll notice the buffer's died, it's not managing it. Now I'm using a nice system here. This is a Coffee Lake system, which is the latest kind of i7 processor. I'm using high definition. You know, it can cope with some of these titles, but it does get to a stage if your machine is not as good enough or if your title is more complicated, then you'll find that when you do the caching, it might take a little bit of time. Now, the good thing is that if it's cached, it, it should be able to play it back. But if you haven't cached it, it might just stutter all the way through the title. That's just how it works. I'm going to tick it and put it back on. There's obviously a lot more things under here, like if you go into the title settings, you've got the size of the title, which was set because you've come into Edius, so there's things like motion blur. If you actually want to stick motion blur on them, which I always think looks really nice, you can tick that, and then when you render it, you should have motion blur. On the other hand, it'll take longer to render it. Next, you have to turn the motion blur on, that's taking a little bit longer. But that's how you start working with Titler Pro 5. And there's my final title. 
And you might notice there, especially as that thing starts spinning, yep, I have got some motion blur, which is making it look a little bit nicer than the sharp one I had before. Of course, it took a little bit more effort, but yep, that's quite nice. Anyway, that's giving you a quick introduction to New Blue Titler, showing you where to download it and install it, and what to expect once you get up there. It's only just scratched the surface. There's a lot more free tutorials which are on the New Blue website, and they've been doing tutorials for ages, so obviously some of them were with Titler Pro 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 6. So sometimes it's a little bit difficult to work out exactly which one applies to the version of Titler Pro you've got with Edius. I plan to do a couple more tutorials about this, look at delving a bit more into New Blue Titler Pro, so keep an eye on the YouTube channel or subscribe to see those when they appear. But for now, I hope I've given you enough just to make sure you download it, get it installed and get working. Don't forget you can find out more information and see more tutorials at www.dvctraining.co.uk or contact me, david, at dvctraining.co.uk Visit the Facebook page where I post notifications on software updates and things like my tutorials. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, hope that's been useful and I'll see you next time.